<coughs> so I'm uh, back in Hobart now. After f I've just spent five weeks in the States with a couple of thousand of these things. It's a very simple flyer. On the front of it, it says how cool my book is. And on the back of it, it says how you can get my book on iTunes. And it was a very simple plan. All I really wanted to achieve was to get my novel onto the iTunes bookstore rankings. So, you know, like the top 100 for the genre. Uh, and it's just based on the amount of sales it makes for that month or whatever. So I thought, sell as many iTunes books as I can in a month and um, hopefully make a splash on that rankings thing. The problem is I didn't know how many sales it took to get onto the rankings thing. Was it a 1,000? Was it 10,000? Was it a couple of hundred? Uh, I just didn't know. Also, I didn't know how many sales I was making because iTunes only reports their sales to you quarterly. So the whole five weeks I was in the States going to these conventions up and down the coast, I didn't know how many books I was selling on iTunes. I was handing out thousands of those flyers, literally thousands, and having conversations with each one and really putting in the hard yards to try to get my book out there, but just had no idea if anyone was actually going home and downloading the book. And I only found out today, actually, the... Uh, sales report from iTunes. It's two weeks after I've got back from the States and I've only just found out how I went while I was in the States. And uh, i got to say, it's, uh, <laughs> I was very surprised. So the plan in the States was to go to five conventions, Anime Expo in LA, San Diego Comic Con, Kentucky Con in Sacramento, Fandemonium in Napa, Idaho, and Gamer con in san francisco gamo is spelt with a y by the way that's a pun very much intended and um i set off with a tour manager named emma we went to la and we went to the first convention anime expo uh la itself was a cool place it's it's immediately familiar and immediately comfortable i think that's because as a westerner we're kind of raised in a pop culture universe that's a set, that's our universe and LA is very much the center of that universe and people from LA seem to have that attitude too like they are in the most important place in the universe and that attitude very quickly rubs off onto you when you go there and at first it seems ridiculous and after a couple of days you start thinking when I leave this place I'm gonna have some serious withdrawals like I'm missing out on the most important things happening in the world and uh, that was very much the case and especially coming back to Hobart I mean if you look at the a map of the world you've got typically australia will be down in the right hand corner and then if you look into the sort of right hand corner of that you've got tasmania and then if you look at the bottom right hand corner of that you've got a city called hobart it's like it's got its back turned to the whole world a very sleepy little town and that's where i am now so i feel like i've come from the center of the universe to you know the hiding spot in deep in a little cave but that's cool it's a good place to get things done um, LA, that's what I was talking about I met some really cool people um, During the time at Anime Expo, the first convention It became clear to me that Emma, the tour manager that I'd chosen um, A very good friend of mine It wasn't working out, we just didn't travel well together It was a bad idea So I basically had to say, look, I'm going to do this by myself And it was a very awkward thing It was like a breakup almost, so um, you know, she basically said, give me till the end of the day to get my things and I'm going to keep traveling around the States by myself. And I was going to keep traveling around the States by myself. So I had a day to kill and I was in Santa Monica. So I went to Starbucks and I bought a novel. Uh, it's a very touristy place, but you know, a lot of Hollywood is touristy in like that. You're lucky to be here sort of touristy way. Like they don't treat you very well. They don't really, it's not particularly nice, but Santa Monica is very nice. And it's touristy in that like, um, we're, we're happy to have you here sort of way. Like it's, there's money basically is what I'm trying to say. It's a nice place. Um, although any nice place in America still has a weird, um, I don't know how to explain it. I guess I'll just tell the story that explains it. When I was in Santa Monica, on that day when I was wasting time, I had my book and before I went and decided to read it in Starbucks, I was walking around and I was looking at the beach and all scattered up and down the beach was people just sitting under sort of under umbrellas or 
people sitting under trees in the park along the beach and just kind of in the grass. And I was like, that's nice. People just kind of relaxing in the grass, in the shade. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll walk over there and I'll sit in the shade with those people and I'll read my novel. And then when I walked up to the park, all of those people relaxing in the shade were homeless people and they were just basically sleeping. <laughs> it kind of, that's the that's the strange thing. It's really beautiful, really picturesque, and there's a lot of nice, you know, cars and people. And, but then, yeah, you got that weird element of uh, the American economy, the recession thingy, whatever you call it. Uh, that's Santa Monica. That's all of America, really. Anyway, what was I saying? I was sitting in Starbucks reading Ender's Game, and I looked across the table, and a dude was sketching me. And I went and talked to that guy, and um, just randomly I met this guy, Chris, uh, who was a, f- a little depressed that day, and so was I, because I was, it was all up in the air, like, I didn't know how the tour was going to go, I was a bit worried about doing it by myself, I was a bit worried about abandoning Emma in that thing in America, and he was, he seemed to be doing a bit of soul searching himself, he told me he was there that day people watching, and just sketching people randomly, and we talked for about five hours, and it turns out, you know, he was lacking a bit of direction, he'd had some family tragedies and he had he'd lost his job recently too and he just didn't know what to do with the, you know how the rest of his life was going to pan out and I guess I was in the same spot and we just talked it through and his real talent like he loved to dance he was a great dancer and a choreographer but his real talent was um drawing and I told him some advice that my grandpa told me and he said uh if you can sing then it's selfish not to sing and I think that applies to art in general. If you can do something that will give other people entertainment or pleasure or something to think about or a bit of escapism, uh, it's it's selfish not to provide that service to hold it in and keep it for yourself. And drawing was his thing. So, um, you know, I left him on that and then <laughs> what did I do? I went back and... The next convention was San Diego Comic Con, and I thought, before I leave LA and head to San Diego, I'm going to meet up with Chris again, the artist from Starbucks who sketched me and who was having a crisis. And I did meet up with Chris, and uh, he said, you know what, I was thinking about that thing you were saying about art, and I'm going to come with you to Comic Con. And he opened his bag, and he started showing me these little portraits that he'd painted, little hand-painted things, and they were minions from Despicable Me. And... uh he was saying his plan was to sit on the street and draw portraits of people, hand-drawn um, minions, like themselves as a minion. And also he had these hand-painted minions, which were like minions in cosplay, like a minion dressed as Iron Man or a minion dressed as Spider-Man or whatever. And they were really cool. And um, we didn't know how it was going to go. We didn't know if people would like it or not. But I said, you know what, let's go to Comic-Con together and we'll do it. I'll do my thing, you do your thing, we'll just see how we go. When you were younger, you, you said... Um, you approached art like it was life or death. Oh yeah, dude, that's obviously faded. <laughs> Which one is it at the moment? Uh, right life or death? It's, it's right now it's death. But... <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's like it's like going in stages, you know. Like I used to be working on my spirit and stuff, and now I'm like trying to feed myself and then. Down, so. <laughs> What's below that? What's below trying to feed yourself? No and uh, let me tell you, like, you know, he set up in the morning out in the street outside the convention center and just started drawing people for tips. After a couple, he got moved along by security and he had to move a bit further away from the convention center. But the city itself, Comic Con, is just packed with people. 150,000 people attend Comic Con, by the way. Uh, and it takes over San Diego. And people go to San Diego, even if they're not going to the actual convention, just to be part of the atmosphere because the whole city becomes a party. So he was in the street, a bit of a rocky start the first morning, but by noon, I walked back and saw how he was going, and there was a queue of about an hour long for people waiting to get their personalised minion drawn, and the tip bucket he had was full of notes, and he was selling the little placard ones as well, and he was just, by the end of the day, he was so happy just to be able to buy me dinner, you know, <laughs> to repay me for, you know, helping him out a little bit. And uh, that was great to see. And I just feel really honoured to have been part of helping an artist become an artist again. You know, he was a bit lost. He wasn't sure how to make money from art. He wasn't sure if he could realistically be an artist. But now he's um, doing well with that. So Comic-Con itself was 
uh, amazing. Four days of just whirlwind exhaustion. Like you, there was everywhere you went, even in the convention center, you're handing out flyers, you're selling books, you're meeting people, you're making contacts and getting business cards. Then after that, you'll go to the parties out in the city, and those are all people mingling, industry people, and you're meeting really good contacts, and it's just fantastic. Then, you know, you go back to the hostel, and even at the hostel in the communal areas, it's all people, that are industry people, like this guy's a blogger, this guy reviews for such and such magazine, this guy's a producer of films, and everyone's like, you just want to meet everyone and hear everyone's stories. So we'd be doing that, and then you get up in the morning and you go to the communal area for breakfast, and then you're meeting more people again and handing over business cards over cereal. Uh, and then you hit the convention center and do your thing again and it was for four days it was no sleep and just so much fun but it really exhausted by the end and uh so after that i thought i want to go to san francisco um i had a few days off between that and the next convention so i thought i'll go to san francisco and spend two days there might be a nice city I fucking hate San Francisco. Very beautiful, aesthetically place. Beautiful place, full of very ugly people. I'll leave that there and I'll move on to Sacramento, the next stop. KintokiCon was a very small convention, less than a thousand people, and by comparison to Comic Con, the previous one, which was 150,000 people, it was a good place to recover from Comic Con and it was relaxing and it was fun. And it was the kind of place where you could meet everyone there so I really had a good time there but by the end of that one I'd run out of physical copies I'd sold out of physical copies of my book so all I had left was flyers and um, the the last two conventions one of them was a very small convention in Idaho very far to go for a convention of a couple of hundred people with with nothing to sell so I thought, I don't know if it's worth going to that. And the, the last one was in San Francisco again, and I fucking hate San Francisco, so I didn't fancy going back there. So I just thought, that's a lot of effort to go to just to hand out flyers. I've worked really hard for these first three conventions. Maybe I should just go back to San Diego where I feel welcome and where it's fun and where people are happy to see you. And I love San Diego, i got to be honest. So I did. I went there and I spent the last six days, I think it was, just kind of trying to relax, trying to reward myself for my hard work and uh, people would hug me you know be like oh it's good to see you again Uh, and it was a good feeling so I uh, I spent the last few days there doing that Uh, and then I flew home but um you know I was thinking about the trip and was it a success or not and well one thing that only sunk in recently is a big success Emma the tour manager that I had to fire. She ended up going to New York and she met someone there who she'd known previously, but she um, met him again and now they're engaged to be married. And that's that's a success in itself. So, you know, no longer am I barred from New Zealand. She's a Maori, by the way, and um, <laughs> after the whole breakup thing, she said to me, don't go to New Zealand. My cousins basically want to kill you. And now that I've uh, been the sort of Cupid that's led her to be engaged. Now all her cousins are like, come to New Zealand. We love you for setting this up. So that's good. Uh, And that she's happy. That's also quite good. This guy that she's marrying is a very influential dude in the film industry. And um, one thing that happened while I was in San Francisco, hating everything, over in New York, this guy, Emma had shown this guy a video clip that I made a while ago, which is of a guy busking in Hobart. And... um, it was the first thing that I decided that I filmed when I decided to buy all this equipment that I'm using right now, and uh, it turned out pretty good. And he liked it. And this guy works for MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York. He's a projectionist. And whenever there's a film debuted in New York, that's the place, that's the cinema where they do it for premieres, you know. And uh, he's the guy to go to. So he knows all the directors, he knows all the producers and film actors and everything. So. He uh, he was doing the premiere for Woody Allen's new film, Blue Jasmine, um, while I was 
hating everything in San Francisco, and he decided to play my video clip at the start of the Woody Allen film. So that's something that was a massive success. It was completely out of nowhere. But um, just to be played, a film that I made to be played alongside a Woody Allen film was, for me, that's a lifelong goal that I never actually had, but it's massive. I love Woody Allen as a director. He's fantastic as an artist and a writer, one of my idols. So that was huge. So that's another success that I can attribute to the trip to America. I guess also Chris, the the dancer who draws the minions, you know, now he's still doing more conventions, he's travelling around, he's making money, he's supporting himself, and he's got more followers online than I do now, and he's just it's really taking off, and the best thing is that people are responding to it so well. You look at any of his photos on Instagram, and they all say, thanks so much for drawing me the other day, it was great to meet you, I love my, the picture that you drew for me, that kind of thing, so he's, he's uh, doing what an artist should be doing, you know, he's giving people that entertainment and I just love that I was able to be a part in helping that come around excuse me so for me that's a huge success that I can attribute to the the journey but the uh the sales how did I go on iTunes the goal you know was to get on the iTunes rankings to make the sales enough to make a splash and yeah like I said I got the results now of that and uh how many sales on iTunes, did I make in the uh, the five weeks? Well, <laughs> the total of sales for the whole five weeks, handing out thousands of flyers, having a, hundreds of conversations about the same thing, is uh, four sales. <laughs> four fucking sales. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter so much. So, that's it. That's uh, that's the trip, in a nutshell. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you were one of the people I met in America, it was very nice to meet you. Uh, and my Australian friends, it's so nice to be back, and I look forward to seeing you all again around wherever. Uh, thanks for watching. What do you think about Santa Monica? It's like a bubble.